helped so many. Yeah, thank you, sir. He has helped so many people to uh, to win grants across Africa and uh, and uh, overseas. You know, and you know the the good thing about grant is that uh, every one of us know. I don't want to use the negative word, but you see, every every one of us know how easy in quote it is to come about money. You know, I've met people that have that have business ideas that um, it will take them genuine business ideas. I mean, fantastic ideas, but somehow money is the bane. So they have this dream, they have this vision in their mind, but somehow they are not just in position financially to execute that idea. And I have met people who are saying, okay, I'm saving. I'm, I'm saving, okay, maybe the, the goal is 5 million. And he's been saving for five years. The money has not reached 2 million. So his, his dream and his vision is, is still being pushed to the future, hoping that one day he will be able to, uh, to do something about it. And that is how some people have dreams and some people never are never able to realize it because of lack of funds. Yes, we know that there are some other issues that business owners face, but of course, lack of funds is one of the major ones. And that's one of the reasons why I want to address it today. So grant is one of the ways by which you can, uh, you can leverage on to raise money for your business. And um, there are many other things you can do to raise money for your business, apart from just struggling alone or trying to save. Yeah, saving is also one of the, uh, one of the things you should do, but there are so many other things. And one of the benefits we get when we come to forums like this is that we get to learn things we do not know. One of the problems I've seen with a lot of business people is that uh, you cannot be a business person and not socialize and not network. Because when you network with people, you, you have um, a lot of advantages, information that's not necessarily uh, that those people will give you money, but there will be information that can transform your life. And that's one of the things we are going to be benefiting today. So the one, one thing I want to say before I call up our lecturer for today is that, you see, I keep telling people that when people are invited for this kind of classes and it is free, they tend to uh, take it for granted. Please, I don't want you to do that. You know, at on the platform of Avila Business School, it is a vision that we have, you know, that um, make us to do this for free. The same things you are going to be learning today, people pay a lot of money to, 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 to learn it on a good day. So I want you to uh, be conscious of why you are here and what you want to achieve. Don't take things for granted because you are not paying anything to learn some of these things. So that's the biggest counsel I can actually give you today, right? So uh, I'm going to uh, hand over to uh, our main lecturer for today. And I still want to encourage you that you should make sure you get uh, the best from this class. It's going to be a short one. And uh, for those of you on our WhatsApp platform, please, we are not going to have time to allow you ask questions at the end of the class because of our time. So while the class is going on, please do drop your um, questions on the WhatsApp group. And immediately after the class, the questions will be addressed. If you are not on the WhatsApp group, you can also do well to drop your um, questions in the chat box. It will be attended to. So thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Dayo Adetiloye is the uh, chairman and CEO of Dayo Adetiloye Business Hub. He's a multimillionaire that has um, uh, raised a lot of businesses. He, he sits on the board of many companies uh, across Africa. He is a many times uh, Tony Elumelu Foundation uh, a mentor. And of course, uh, by the time he comes up, uh, you are going to listen to him and 
share from his wealth of experience. And um, I believe that at the end of the session, you will have been able to gather one or two things that will uh, help your business. We call it executive business transformation course. Our goal is that by the time you go through uh, the things we teach here, you will be able to put those things we teach into practice. And then you'll be able to transform your business from what it is to what you want it to be, right? So without wasting uh, our time any further, uh, Mr. Dayali Tiloye, you are welcome. Uh, it's good to have you here. Over Thank you now. very much. Thank you very much. Um, I want to welcome everybody here today. So if you can see my slide and uh, you can hear my voice, just say I can see and can hear. Just type it at the chat box. Just type I can see and I can hear. So I'm going to take us in the next few minutes uh, through this section. Then we'll be able to have time for the question and answer section. So if you can see and you can hear me very well and clear, just type I can see and I can hear. I'm waiting for us. Just type I can see and I can hear. Okay, I can see, I can hear. Okay, thank you, Avila Business School. Who else is on this call? Who else is on this call? Okay, Ojo Julius is raising up his hand, saying I can see and I can hear. Okay, very good. So I'm going to take us through uh, this section quickly, then we start the question and answer section. I want to appreciate uh, Mr. Matthew, the CEO of the Abila Business School and the coordinator of the Executive Business Transformation course. We want to appreciate you for giving me the opportunity to be here today to come and engage your audience. So today we'll be looking at proven ways to raise money, to start and grow your business in Nigeria. You know, when I look at this topic, the fact that we are in Nigeria, we have our peculiarities. There are some things that can work outside the country easily. There are things that in Nigeria is not that easy as it is. But we want to look at how we can use proven methods, all right? Proven methods that people have, uh, people we look up to as mentors, they have used to raise business, to start business in Nigeria, to grow their business, to expand their business. So we want to look at those proven ways. And the first thing I want to ask you, will be that capital is not just money. How can I raise capital? Capital is not just money. We have intellectual capital. That means you know, you have a technical know-how of that business. You, uh, you want to start a poultry farm, for example, you know how to raise a board from egg and you ash it, and you grow it, and you process it, and you market it. That knowledge is a capital. That is intellectual capital. The second one is uh, social capital. Social capital simply means that anything you put out there, people want to identify with it because it's you. So people love you. You have good human relation. People know you. When you want to do anything, people want to support you, all right? Call it social capital. Your social capital is something that you can convert into other things. There are some people based on their social capital. Instead of buying something, let's say you want to buy, let's say you want to learn website designing for 100,000 naira, but because you have a good social capital, and you know somebody that can help you to talk to the school that is going to train you and they are going to slash it into half. So you don't need 100K again. What you now need is 50K. And maybe you, you meet somebody and you say, can you help me to talk to the founder of Abila Business School to collect half the price of training on website designing? 
and maybe you meet with me and I call the CEO of Abila Venus to and say, I have somebody here, he's a very good person. I, he has done one or two things with me. And I know that your course, your 20 course on website designing is 100,000. Can you please reduce it to 50,000? He has 50,000 and he wants to pay. Based on that social capital, that price is going to be slashed into half. So that is social capital. Now we have the money capital. That means the physical money you need to do, to start your business, to raise your business. So all these things are what I'm going to play around today. Don't limit yourself to only form form of capital, which is the money capital. Don't limit yourself to money capital. We have the intellectual capital, we have the social capital. In fact, the more you know about your business, the less money you need. Let me repeat that again, or somebody can help me to type it. The more you know about your business, the less money you need in starting it or in growing it. Can somebody type that? The more you know about your business, the less money you need in starting it or in growing it. So the major thing is money is not the number one thing you need for a business. The number one thing you need for a business is knowledge. Knowledge is what is going to help you to raise that money and to grow the business very well. So you want to know why do you want to raise money? Discover your why. You need to discover your why. Why do you want to raise capital? Some of you, you want to start a business and you need a millionaire, but you don't have a detailed breakdown item by item, what you are going to use one million dollar to do. And because you don't have that knowledge, sometimes by the time you do that detailed breakdown, you might just discover that it's 750,000 uh, that you need. You might just discover that it's 500,000 you need. You might just discover that instead of buying this, you can borrow it. Instead of buying this, somebody can dash you this. You might just discover that I don't need money again. I can go and start. All right? And that tells me that knowledge is fundamental truth that we need in starting a business and not capital. All right? I know there are some people here. Your dream is to start a business of 50 million era. And the truth of the matter is that you don't even have the 50 million era now. If they sell everything you have, you don't have that 50 million. And you still want to achieve that purpose. How do you go about it? So I said, discover your why. If your why is strong enough, there is no amount of money you cannot raise on this service of the earth. If your why is strong enough, there is no amount of money you cannot raise. So, and people raise money for several reasons. They raise money to start a business, they raise money to grow the business. They raise money to expand the business. Every time entrepreneur always think of raising money. So number one, use your savings. Somebody will say, I'm a student. I don't have money. But the person that has money has something that you have, which is time you have 24 hours. The richest man in the world has just 24 hours in a day. God is not a partial judge. God is not a respecter of any person. Anybody that call on him anywhere in the world, he will respond. So he didn't give Dangote 48 hours in one day and give you 24 hours and say that's the reason why he's more successful than you. No. Okay, so your time is a factor that you can use to raise money, to make money, and to save money. You also need that time to invest money. So I want to talk to you today. You don't have money at all. That's why I want to start today. You don't have a dime in your bank account. In fact, your bank account is reading radio frequency. 
You know radio frequency, 91.1, 101 101.7, 100.5. You know the radio frequency. Maybe that is what your bank account is reading now. So you don't have anything, you don't have savings. My brother, my sister, you are here today. There are some things you have. Number one, you have 24 hours. Number two, you have your hands, you have your leg, you have your head. If you want to tell me, Mr. Dayo, I did not go to school. That does not make you to be poor. That does not make you not to have savings. Can you wake up today and go and find something to do? Can you wake up today and step out, go to a construction site, go and carry something? Maybe they are giving you 1,000 naira, 2,000 naira, 5,000 naira per day. Go and use your time and use your energy. At that level, you will be using your hand and your leg to walk. The money will start coming. That money, as they are coming, start saving it. Somebody say, somebody that is not saving, is not safe. Somebody that is not saving, is not a company that is not saving, is not safe. And deliberately, you have to start saving. The money is not enough for you to eat. Don't spend everything. I remembered a, a point in time, uh, the company I was working with that time as a network marketer, they gave me a car. They gave me a car and the papers to clear that car, I need 350,000 euros. That time, 350,000 era was a lot of money. It's just like now they are telling me to go and bring 5 million era to clear something. All right, it was a lot of money that time. But what helped me to be able to clear my car fast was the fact that I had a saving that I started doing a contribution. And you know what? It was the exact money I was contributing. The time I supposed to, ca to cash that money that that opportunity uh, came true. And I, I didn't have to struggle to raise that money. Savings is very important. Number two, sell what you have to get what you want. What do you have today that you can sell to get what you want? For example, for me, if I need to raise 20 million euro today, there are things that I can sell. I can sell my car, I can sell my there are so many things i can sell for my car so if i have property i can sell it if i have um, if i have machines i can sell them any other thing that i have i can sell them to raise money to fund my dream some people will now start calling uncle start calling brother start calling sister, and by the time they tell you that they too have their own, uh, they, they, in Yoruba, they will say they have Bukata. They have their own um, things that is taking money away from them. So they cannot leave their own and come and focus on your own. All right? So you must wake up. Nobody is ready to give you a dime. Wake up. Start, stop sleeping, wake up. Nobody is ready to give you a dime. Say what you, want, you have to get what you want. All right? Don't go and sell your body. That one is wrong on its own. You cannot go and do prostitution now and say because they said, sell what you have to get what you want. You cannot do prostitution. You cannot go and thief and be stealing. All right? You cannot be doing all those negative work. They got them negative work, all right? So sell what you have to get what you want. The next thing, if you have questions, start putting your question on the WhatsApp group, so I'll be reading from there. Tell your parent to raise the money for you. Some of you, you have parents that can actually help you to start a business. That can, if, if, it's, if that money is to loan, all right? You have parents that can use their social capital to get you a loan, but you are not you are not leveraging on what you have. Tell your parents to raise you the money. If you don't have parents again, you have uncles. It's time for you to start having cordial relationship with them. 
you have a uncle that is a billionaire and you, you are raising 10 million era. you are struggling to raise 10 million era. and you have a uncle that is a billionaire how can you build a relationship with your uncle when when last did you call your uncle and just say i just want to, to say hi to you the only time you used to call them is when you need money when you want to raise money who, who is going to answer you have you packaged gifts and give to your uncle before you package a gift maybe give to you their sheet their sheet brain have you done that before and you are struggling to raise money this is how to raise money relationship will bring you the money that you need the next one use low apps like carbon fast low no cash and all that now i don't know the level of money you want to raise but i'm even saying that no matter how small the money you need there is a way to go about it i've seen somebody that has been trying to raise two fifty thousand era trying to raise it and not be able to raise it the platform like this can help you to raise it apps and you know the important thing these apps if you collect let's say you collect 100k this month and you pay it within three months they will be begging you to come and collect more before you know if you keep on collecting and paying collecting and paying it's going to get to a time they will be using three million to beg you five million to beg you because you have been faithful if you are faithful in little money they will trust you with bigger money let me say that again if you are faithful with little money they will trust you with bigger money your uncle uh loan you ten thousand naira, ten thousand naira. till today you have not paid back and it's over one year is that is it that uncle that you now go and meet and say i need one million naira? that we look at you and say you that you run away with my ten million ten thousand naira. so it's time for you to begin to have good track record now uh raise money from friends and family is a flow now friends and family can give you loan or equity and i would say the difference between these two loan is what you pay back at a interest rate some people if they like you they can give you non-interest loan your uncle can look at you and say you need a millionaire and you sure that this business will thrive you have all your figures all your you've done all your findings he can say okay i'll give you a million naira for six months but no interest is going to be free of interest but when the payback the greatest challenge we have in nigeria is that people will collect government loan and they will not pay back government will not be stars chasing them all around in the last one year government has given out what is called covid 19 loan do you know that today some people have not paid back government is still chasing them all around so at that level who is at fault will you say it's difficult to raise money it's not difficult to raise money it's integrity character that is lacking with us especially in nigeria we lack integrity we lack character before you can even trust somebody now to do business with and transact business is very difficult nowadays all right now let's look at equity equity is uh, a money that you give to a business and they give you shares you now become co-owner of that business all right so for example you can meet somebody an investor and the investor will tell you that uh i'm going to give you a, you need 10 million i'm going to give you 10 million but i'm going to have 30 percent equity in your business that means any profit you make you divide it into 30 percent and 70 percent your own is 70 his own is 30 percent do you know that there are some short businesses that people do today and this is how they raise money imagine you are coming to meet me and say mr dio have a business i want to do for three months they ask me to supply something if i supply it this is a profit this is a profit margin 
if you give me this money, this is your, your own percentage that you are going to get for the profit of this venture and you get your money back. If you are a person of character integrity, do you think I will not put money? I will put money. But if you are somebody that you are, you don't have integrity, you don't have character, I will run away with my money. That means even if my money is not making any interest, there is a rule in investment. Never lose money. If me giving you money means that I'm going to lose that money, I will rather keep my money. Don't be carried away with uh, people that will say, come and double your money. That, that's the reason why we have uh, MMM. You know how much people lost in MMM. There is one of reason they call it Shimak. Close to 22 billion. That this uh, organization cut away with people's money. Why? Because people want to double money. You don't want to work. You don't want to put money, and my money is increasing. Integrity is cast nowadays. Character is lacking, and that's the reason why it's difficult for people to raise money. Now let's move on. What you can also do is called joint venture. All right, you can call it partnership. Most of the businesses abroad that started small and they are now conglomerate now. That's, they started by partnering with their friends that has money. You have idea. Your friend has money, has no idea. You, you have idea, you have no money. Can you do something together? Can your friend be the first investor in your business? The likes of uh, Google, that was how they started. The, the two friends, somebody put money down, somebody has the idea. And today, they are, they are, they are rolling in, in billions of dollars. So there are people like that that have started a business. Even Microsoft, somebody put money into his business. Joint venture. You can do joint venture between yourself and your uncle, yourself and your parent, yourself and your friends, yourself and your junior colleague. Don't use size to, 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 to bring anybody down. Your junior colleague at work can be an investor in your business. I had a story of somebody, when he was leaving banking, he told them in the bank and all the people working in bank with him, that I want to go and start an agric venture. He want to go and start poultry business. This guy is one of the best in the bank that time. I forgot the name of the bank. Do you know that the money he needed, all the staff in the bank contributed as investor to raise that money that he needed. He didn't have to struggle. He didn't have to get loan. All of them become shareholder in that company. I think maybe he's $10 million that he needed that time. He raised that money. If it's $100 million he needs, he will raise that money. Money is everywhere. But do you have character to attract it? Do you have competence to hold it? Do you have integrity to, to, to multiply that money? Those are the things that we are looking at today. So apply for grants. This is one of the ways to raise money that I personally recommend, especially to young people between age 18 and 35 years. There are, people, there are still ones that were sent to 40. There are still ones that were sent to 50. Tony Lumelu grant application ended yesterday night. They will give you 5,000 US dollars. In Nigeria currency as of today, is about two point something million. Do you know that that money can be yours by December this year, if you apply for it? But the application closed yesterday. Grant application take a process, and I want to quickly run us through the process today. Number one, get a smartphone. Some of us, we don't have smartphone. And if you don't have smartphone, then that means your phone is stupid. Do for a smartphone, phone that can browse, that can access the internet. Then have an email address. Some of you, you don't check your email address. That's how they will send you a message 
or that you should apply for a grant and the thing will expire before you even notice get a laptop if you are here and you are very young any gift that you can give to yourself if you go for nyc and come back and you don't have laptop they're supposed to slap your face you go for nyc and you come back and you don't have a laptop slap you cannot even tell me that i will know the level of on seriousness that you are and if you are here today you've been working for five years and you don't have laptop it might not be your fault because we don't know the usefulness today you will know the usefulness you need a laptop laptop is your office today let me tell you this in your place of work the day you start carrying laptop to your place of work and you start working let's let's say you're a teacher all right in that school but during your break time you open your laptop you start working people will start seeing you differently they will say this one is an executive teacher before you know anytime they want to do anything on that has to relate with tech they will start calling you there are some schools now they they, they teach their children through virtual board you understand you need a laptop there is no even if you are a brick layer you need laptop there is no way you cannot convince me that you don't have a laptop. See what I'm doing today. I'm using my laptop. Some of you, you are connecting to what we are doing now via a laptop. Some of you, you are connecting via phone. If you have a stupid phone, you cannot connect here today. All right? The world is changing and you have to change with it. Now come up with an idea. Some of you, you are here, you are working somewhere, you've not started a business. Come up with an idea. Your idea could be a new idea. It could be an existing idea. When I say new idea, it could be something that nobody has done before. And it could be something that people are already doing and you want to also do it. As a matter of fact, we encourage people to do business that people are already doing. Scan your environment. Just look at yourself, your money, where do you spend it the most? All right, your own money, or let's say you are collecting 250,000 per month. Do a breakdown. Where is this money going to the most? Once you discover where it's going to the most, go and invest in, in, into that line. Let's say, for example, you discover that 70% of your money go into food. My brothers and sisters, go and start food business. Why? Because people are already spending money in that sector. You don't need to beg anybody to come and eat food. You don't need to beg anybody to come and buy food. On your own, you go to market. You go and look for who is selling yam, who is selling gary. You buy. Do you know how much those people make per day? You know, we are, we are, we are so blinded with our certificate and the fact that we want to tie tie and sit in an office and be enjoying ourselves it's time to wake up people in the market a lot of them are earning 300k per month profit in their business a lot of them are any if they open books for you if they open book for you some of you you quit your job you will just go and start a business look at where you have been spending money can you do something around it you understand now so it could be for profit business it could be an ngo there are ngos today they have employed a lot of people they have received a lot of grants but let's move on once you discover what you want to do quickly give it a name all right give it a logo Create a brand around it. Look at the communication, look at pay order, look at shop price. Now, go and register it. You know you want to assess grant. Hey, so I'm giving you step by step now. Go and register it with Corporate Affairs Commission. It could be a business name. All right. It could be a business name. It could be a limited liability company. And it could be an NGO. The next one, get your tax identification number, call it T number. Any tax 
uh, office closer to you, we'll give it for you for free. But if your CAC registration is more than six months, then they might not give it to you for free. You pay some amount of money. Go to the bank and open a corporate account. Imagine you are meeting your uncle for the first time and you say, Uncle, I need also a amount of money. You can pay it into my corporate account. When your uncle here, corporate account, he knows that you are ready to do this business, you are serious. But somebody wants to give you money for business. Somebody wants to even pay for service you are rendering and you are sending personal account. It's a slap on your face. If you are following what I'm saying and you are enjoying it, just say, go ahead. Just type go ahead. I want to be sure we are following. If you are here, you are getting what I'm saying. You are following. Just say, I'm following. Just type, I'm following, I'm following. I want to see. Just type, I'm following. Ojo Juniors, you're raising up your hand. Okay, that's noted. That Maybe that's to say you are following. Okay, OS, OS is okay. Akin doing say, I'm following by raising up his hand. Okay, okay, thank you. You're all raising up your hand. So let's begin to move, move forward. So today, even if you are still uh, working somewhere, register your business today. Open a corporate bank account for it. All right. The next one, um, you need a business plan. You need a business plan. If you're already existing business, you need what is called growth plan or expansion plan. You must put things into writing. You must document. All right? Somebody say, I'm getting value. Thank you very much. You must document. If you are just starting, you need a business plan. If you have already started, you need an expansion plan or a growth plan. All these things are documented. Your uncle will request for it to give you money. Banks will request for it to give you money. Grant giving organization will request for it for giving you money. So how do you go about writing? I've given you some things here, but you can always uh, reach out to our convener, Mr. Matthew. Mr. Matthew will help you to write a thorough business plan for your business for starting or for growth or for expansion. And I know that it will give you uh, this kind. Business plan is not cheap. Oh. Let me quickly let you know. It's not cheap. It's an investment on its own. Are you getting it now? It's an investment on its own. So you need to pay for it. It's a service you need to pay for. All right, so but these are those few breakdown executive summary, business description, product and services, uh, market analysis, competitor analysis, sales and marketing plan, operational plan, marketing plan, financial and projections. So reach out to him, it will help you to write a, even if you are going to start your business next year, write a business plan now. Are we getting what I'm saying? Write a business plan. If you are going to start your business next year, write it now. Now, the next thing is look for grant opportunities. All right. Uh, so where do you get grant opportunity? You can visit my website, diadetlearning.com. We put in uh, information there that you can access. You can also go to opportunitydex.org. You can also go to opportunityforafricans.com. Uh, Tony Elumelu Grant is there. That one has expired yesterday and all that. Just uh, target these three websites. You can screenshot this or you write it down. Diadetly.com, opportunitydex.org opportunities for africans.com so these are places where you can get grants for your business now 
when you are writing those grants, please and please review with your grants with a professional. Don't just go and submit. You know, there are some people, they are too financial. They see opportunity, they write it. They will not even bring it to Mr. Matthew to say, Mr. Matthew, can you help me to check it before you submit? They will just go and submit like that. Reviewing of grants is not free, or Mr. Matthew will charge you. It's not free. All right, but I'm of the opinion that show it to him. Let him help you to see it before submitting. Now, grants application, um, believe that you can win it. I remember my organization that I had a clear business of. Before we assessed Tony Elumelu grant, $5,000. The first time we applied, they didn't pick us. So if because they didn't pick us and we now lose courage and we decide to say we are not uh, applying again, so they will not have it. The second time we apply, we were selected. So believe that you can win. Even if they have rejected your application for five times, still believe that you can win. All right? He said, winners never quit. Don't quit. Apply again. Be positive, even if you don't win. Be connected with people with information. There is a book that I used to recommend, but we're out of stock now. The book is Men and Blessing Book on how to win grants and access funding for your business. Uh, I'm not sure if he still has it. And uh, if he's going to have it now, it's going to be very expensive now, maybe 5,000 or 6,000. But, uh, but the book, I used to sell it, but I don't have it again. I used to recommend it very well. If any of you have interest, you can pay 6,000 Naira to Mr. Matthew. If we can get 20 people to pay 6,000 Naira, I will order for the book and we distribute to you. And then uh, uh, Mr. Matthew, we reach out to you. You will be able to, you will pay for your delivery also. So you should be budgeting like 9,000 there for the whole thing, except you are closer to where he is. The book is Winning Streak and you cannot buy it online. The person is my mentor. He has raised hundreds of millions of dollars. There was a time that Google, he won a, a grant with Google, Google Impact Challenge. 250,000 US dollars. Can somebody convert that to Naira for me? 250,000 US dollars. That was how, how, that was the money he won from Google Impact Challenge. Convert $250,000 to Naira. Just use 500 Naira to multiply it and see what we are talking about. And that's the reason why if somebody like that has put a material together, then you should rush for it. Like I said, I'm not out of stock, but if you have interest, pay 6,000 Naira to him. If you can have 20 people pay 6,000 Naira to him, then we will order for it. But if not, we'll just leave it like that. Now, apply for loan. There are loans available in Nigeria with good interest rate, some 5%, some 9%. But do you qualify for it? If they, uh -huh, 250,000 US dollar, 125 million era. That was what somebody received as grant. 125 million naira to start business. 125 million naira. So these things are real. All right. Now, how to apply for loans? There are loans in Nigeria. And I can tell you, there's one of there's somebody that has says one point about 1.4 million naira loan. Just uh, late last year, I was involved in the process. So I saw that it's real. You can get money. But do you know how they determine the money was given through Stalin Bank? 
the Stalin bank that gave that money to him. Do you know how they determine how much they gave to him? And the whole process was not even up to two weeks. I'm telling you. And he didn't have any collateral. He didn't have any guarantor. What did they do? They just asked him, uh, St uh, Stalin Bank, they have, a, they have a package. This package just simply says, any bank you are using, even if you don't have account with them, don't worry. Any bank you are using, go and print your six-month bank statement. Let me say that again. Any bank you are using, print six-month bank statement. Add all that money together, divide by 10. How any amount it falls to, that is what they will give to you as loan. And when they divide the person's money, it was around 10 million naira. When they divide it to, with 10%, it was around one point something. The person collected that money without collateral, without guarantor. And they calculated it for him. He will be paying certain amount of money back every month. And it's automatic. They will be removing it from your accounts. Then eventually you will open Stalin Bank account. What am I saying? You say there is no amount of money you want to raise that you cannot raise if you know the way. You can go to any bank. They have loan packages. If you go to GT today, in fact, they, they sent me a mail in GT. They say I qualify for a loan of 250000 And they are begging me to come and collect a loan of 250000 Can you imagine? Somebody begging you and say, this one, no, you qualify. You don't need to do any. If I need that 250000 dollars today, I'll just press a code. The money will hit my bank account. So there is money. All right? Now look for investors. Look at these people. This is Big Eight. This is um, Tony Elmelo. This is Dangote. And this is Mark Subagor. Now, these people, they are investors. They invest into other people's business. They, like Facebook, they are, is buying, he bought Instagram, he bought WhatsApp. You understand? They are investors. Now, the reason why I'm bringing their picture out as I begin to round up is this. These people, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, who are they? They were nobody. 30, in fact, Mazubabog is not up to, uh, it's not up to 40 years old. It's not up to 40 years old. Now, what I want to say to you today is that look around now. Just look around. There are some people we are not hearing their name now. That in the next 10 years, 15 years, they will be the Dangote, they will be the Lumelu, they will be the, um, the Big Gate. Can you identify them? Probably they are on this call today. They are listening to me. Can you identify them? Can you start building that relationship now? I believe that this uh, executive platform is not just for us to be listening to lectures and all that. It's also for us to network. Do you know that the downloaders of tomorrow are listening to me right now? Maybe you are watching the replay of this presentation. Do you know that you that are hearing me can also be the Dangote of tomorrow? You understand? Build the relationship. Your friends can be your investors. You understand? Synergize together. Build the relationship. Don't just be taking, taking, taking. Be a giver. Your friends today, how many friends? If you need a millionaire today, how many of your friends can single handedly invest a millionaire as shares into your business? Let me flip it. How many of your friends can dash you? Let's say you have a course, 
you 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 are doing something and you need money maybe you want to reach out to less privilege and you want to raise 10 million naira how many of your friends you currently have can donate 1 million naira for you each donation no you are not paying back to reach out to the less privilege and if you look at five of the closest people to you now do they have that capacity if they don't have that capacity you know somebody say that you will be where you are in the next five years if where you are in the next five years don't know change number one the people you work with number two the books you read some of you are not reading books some of you the people in your network if they determine your network, that means you are poor. Because the people in your network cannot even give you 2,000 naira. I'm telling you. Some of you, the people in your network cannot even dash you 2,000 naira. It's time to step up. It's time to deliberately build new networks. You can have the same background, but if you don't have the same future, you should not be going together. Let me say that again. You can have the same background. That means you are from the same village, or you are from the same family, or you are from the same school. You went to the same primary school, or you went to the same secondary school. That is what is connecting you together now. But to move forward, start looking for people that are going forward, people that are making progress. People that have a dream of becoming a billionaire. How many of your current friends now have a dream of becoming a billionaire in the nearest future? It's those people that have that dream that you should be working with right now. Drop those ones that have nowhere they are going. Some people will come and meet you. And every all your conversation with them is adding nothing to you. You cannot be working with them anymore. Start looking into the future. And as we begin to change levels and begin to make new friends, begin to connect to new people, you will begin to see your levels start changing from one level to another, from one level to another. And that's the reason why they say your network is your net worth. All right? So it's time for question and answer. I, I believe that a few words I've shared with you today, a few strategies I've shared with you today, we, we really make a greater impact in starting, in growing, in expanding uh, your business. So it's time for questions. We hand over to Mr. Matthew now. And uh, I will be looking at the WhatsApp group for your questions. All right. So, uh, question one. Somebody said, my question is, is it right to take loan from financial service company to start a business? If it is right, then what percentage fund needed for business plan do one need to acquire from them? So now, this is your question. Is not, there are so many things that are hiding there. Number one, what business do you want to start? Number two, how much loan do you need? It was not highlighted in the question. So if you are here, you listen to me, you can put that in the chat box here so that we're able to answer that. I need to know how much you need I need to know the business you want to start because you put it there to start a business. Okay. So when I say it, I'll give you my response. Number two, how do you set legal policy and terms to govern the aims and objectives and interests of the business, as well as to accommodate the different parameters in people, e.g. family, friends, and associates? Now, when it comes to setting structure for your business, there's something we call business structure. 
All right. So uh, there are different different policies guiding your business. So the policy here now, I don't know the specific one. They are policy guiding human resource. All right. You put family here. Are you saying that is it good to employ family members or not? There could be policy around that. There could be financial policy. How money comes into the business, how it goes out. How do you take money out of your business? For what purpose? We money will not be allowed to leave the business. Now, all these policies are what you have to put. But as it is, the question is also not specific. It's too general. So for this kind of person now, one-on-one -on -one consultation might be better for your business. The third one, if someone has started a business and one needs to raise the capital, the capacity, that's the capital of the business, to align the scope of the business, the scope of income, maybe one needs to diversify. Is it advisable to borrow money from financial institution? And what are the other alternatives to use? Now, you can borrow money from financial institution if your business is already running. So you just need running capital. But if you are just starting, it's not good to borrow money to start any business. Don't borrow money to start. Use your savings. But when you want to grow, you can borrow money for growth. But don't borrow money to start. You know, when you are growing, that means you have collateral. When you are starting, no collateral. But when you are going, when you are growing, we can know the worth of your business. All right? Somebody said, is it compulsory to have a business bank account registered in the name of the business? Yes, it is compulsory. Like I've presented to you, it is compulsory. So somebody say, how do you repay loan application? How do you repay loan applications? Loan, especially when it is for new business, since most of them don't have tenure period. In starting your business, never go for loan. I will give you an example. When I finished uh, my MBA program and I'm to start business officially, I needed to even raise about maybe 40,000 naira to get a room apartment outside the uh, campus where I was there. I couldn't raise the money. And I did not go for loan. How did you navigate? How did I navigate it? There was an opportunity that came, and I used my knowledge, the knowledge I already have, to do a, a work that brought me the money. So when you are starting a business, don't go for loan. If care is not taking it's the loan, I will keep the business. Can you partner with someone instead of going for loan? Can you use your savings to start? Can you sell something you already have to raise it? Can you do a business? Raise money in that business and start it? Can you, can you, you see in every business, there is a way to start that business without money. Let me give you an example. You want to start Nangote cement distribution business. You want to start Dangote cement distribution business. And you need three million naira to start. And you don't have a die. You are now raising three million naira. It will not make sense for you to go and get three million naira loan from bank. It will not make sense. The, the business is dead on arrival. 
how can you start Dagote Cement business without paying a dime? And you can start making money. This is it. Can you identify an already existing Dagote Cement distributor? Can you tell that person that I would like to be your on the feed marketer? All right. And what will be my commission? Okay, we say, okay, your commission is 20% if you sell one cement. So it's giving you a license to sell over 5 million worth of cement that he has already used his own money to stock. Do you know that you can start that way and raise your own money to, to start your own? And you don't have to borrow. You know what people want to do? People want to have fine office. They want to furnish all the furnish the office. They want to employ TV people, TV staff, and they themselves. They don't want to do any work. And you are just starting. You don't want to do any work because you are retired. You don't want to do any work. You don't want to get your hand dirty. You want a fine office, fully AC condition. You are selling cement to. You employ TV people. You ask them to go out to start marketing. At the end of the day, they cannot even market very well. At the end of the day, the business cannot even pay the loan that he has got it. At the end of the day, you see that starting with loan is not advisable. Somebody say, is it advisable to start two business at the same time? It's not advisable, just one per time. When that one is successful, you can start the other one. If that one is not successful, is it that you shut it down and start something new, but don't do two things at the same time, especially if you don't have the capacity? It's about capacity now. That go there today has different businesses running for him. But he has CEOs manning each of those businesses. No CEO is doing two things at the same time. It's one thing per time. Is it advisable to change your business name? What it does? And should you desire to change the old business idea or should you just register a new business name entirely? You can register a new business name entirely and start your new idea. You understand? There are some people today, they, they have registered five different businesses and they know what they are using it to do. Now, another one from the WhatsApp group, when could one begin to pay tax to the government? Can I begin to pay tax if my business is not financially stable yet? All right, when it comes to tax, there are laws guiding tax. So you need to familiarize yourself with those laws. One of the laws says that if you are registered as a uh, business name, so proprietorship, when your business start making a revenue of 25 million era, that's when you start paying company tax. So you need to be familiar with that law. Another thing you need to know that you pay is your own personal tax as an employee. You need to be paying tax. So I'm not a, a, a tax expert, but those are the few things you need to know. Then, but you are just opening business today. The team number is not for you to be paying tax immediately. But if you don't have it, the bank will not open a bank account for you. Then somebody say, as a new business owner, what is that is not financially stable, that needed loan from any financial institution, what are the percentage of loan that is advisable? As a new business owner, you are not financially stable. Don't go for your bank loan. Go for family and friends loan that can give you soft landing. And if you know that your business is not viable enough, don't take loan at all. Go and partner with somebody that is already existing. All right? 
Yes, see, when it comes to business, forget this title of CEO, CEO, CEO. You want to be CEO of yourself with zero money in your bank account. Do you want to be a CEO that is poor or somebody that is marketing for somebody that is rich? Which one do you want to be? You understand now? You need to, to, to ask yourself sincere question. If you discover that starting your own business, you don't have money and the loan, your business is not viable enough to take a loan, look for somebody, partner with that person, become their marketer. Market that product, make a lot of money, save the money, use it to start your own business. Uh, is it advisable to, to start a business completely on loan for a new business owner without being shown? Don't start, we've said that, don't start your business with loan. Is business a hands idea for the small scale business owner? Is business account idea for small business owner? I didn't understand that question. All right. Um, let's see if we have more. Perhaps he wants to say that um, for a, a small business owner, um, is it also something they should consider or because you are a small business owner, you should just forget about the whole idea of uh, having a bank account. As a small business owner, as somebody that is interested in starting a business next year, go and register your business, get your team, and open a bank account for it now. You understand? It's compulsory. In fact, by the ending of this, a Miller Business School Executive Business Transformation course. One of our success indicator will be that all of you here now open a business corporate account for your business. That will be one of our indicator as success. You understand? So it's compulsory, it's mandatory, and I will be on it. I, I, I will be in touch with Mr. Matthew on this thing. You must have it. In fact, once you, okay, let me even say it like this. Once you open your corporate account, and it is through this presentation and through this Avila Business School and through this executive business transmission course that you got all the information and the support and the encouragement to open it. The day you open it, drop the account in the WhatsApp group. I have a gift for you. All right? Drop the account in the WhatsApp group. I will I have a gift for you. So it's compulsory that you do it. How do you actually generate ideas at most time? It is difficult to make decisions, but what will be the principal thing one should watch out for? How do you generate ideas? Very simple, read a lot. You need to read about what you are doing every day. A lot of you, you are here, the business you are doing, you are not reading about it every day. It's a bad idea. Go and read about your business. Every, for me, every day I read. Um, I have my business, my business consulting outfit, I added to a business job. I do network marketing. I do affiliate marketing. On all these things, I read about them every day. I read books on affiliate marketing. I read books on network marketing. I read books on how to start, grow, and expand your business. I read every day. That is where I will see idea that I can implement in my business. That is where I will see what I should not do in my business. And I listen to videos, presentation, like the replay of this will be available. You, when you listen to it, you see ideas. So for me, there are some people that I listen to that they are business people, business seminars, financial empowerment programs, financial conventions. I listen to them for ideas. And that's the reason why anywhere I go for a presentation like this, what I'm saying is rich. Why? The combination of those ideas are picked from one place or the other. So that's how you get good ideas. 
uh, somebody say you said we shouldn't start a new business with loan. What if the business is so viable that you start having profit as soon as you start it? Can you still go ahead to get the loan to start such business? No, don't go ahead to get the loan. Look for partners. Loan is not the only option here. Are we getting it? Loan is not the only option. So you must not continually limit yourself on loans. Can you get a partner? Can you partner with, if it's so lucrative and profitable, can you sell something you have now and raise the money? Can you sell your car? Eh? Can you sell your car to see that business? Since you are so sure that this business, can you sell something you have that is so valuable to raise that money? Loan should not be what you should go for. And the funniest thing is that I've seen somebody that has been looking for loan for years now. The best thing I've not seen the loan. Can you start small? That's another thing as we begin to round up. Can we start small? And can we make it practical? What do you want to start today? I will tell you how to start this small. Can you tell me what you want to start today? How much you need? The business you want to start, how much you need, and I will tell you how to start it. Somebody also say, is it advisable to change your business? Okay, I think we have advised that. Can we just do, can I just use two businesses as a practical example so that it will not look like, ah, this is are just talking theory, we are just talking theory, we need loan, you know, you can go here, you can go from here to there, and be, as if you telling yourself, I need loan, I need loan. Let's do practical. Which business are we going to use? You want to start a business, you know the name of the business, you know how much you need, but you are thinking of loan. Drop it, let me tell you how to start it. The first people to raise their hand will be given that opportunity. Exactly, so you can now, only... right now, the first people to raise their hand so that we don't uh, get this mixed up. Thank you. And if nobody raises hand in the next 30 seconds, that means there is nobody that won't start. Okay, Beneza, you can you can mute yourself and and talk. You can mute yourself and talk, Beneza. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, good morning. Yeah, thank you so much for the um opportunity. Thank you for everything you shared. Um, I forgot value. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. Um actually, um on selling what I have to get what I need, so to speak. Um, okay. I, I just want the kind of balance in that um, regard. For example, um, practically, I was going to say, I, I was going to start an online business um, recently, and I was in fact I missed the opportunity, but I was going to sell some properties that I have, and then I sought counsel from some persons, like two persons, and they were like, "It's not." A, good business idea so to speak so i just want to know is it really good to sell beniza, beniza sorry to put you in i think your your internet is a bit challenged so perhaps you can just type your 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 uh question in and of course you seem to be the only one that has um something to to drop on this um on this uh point so just type it and while okay. we are running off if you can also speak louder Okay, uh, can you hear me now? I think it's yes, better. Okay, sorry, uh, I was using a kind of um, Bluetooth. I'm sorry about that. Okay, yeah, on the point on selling what I have to raise what I need, um, yeah, so like I said, I was going to do... That you, what is the opportunity? We have to be specific here so that we can guide correctly. What is the, the opportunity? The you sell online, you want to... Do yes, it was an affiliate marketing business. Um, okay, how much do you need? I that needed 40K. Okay, very good. 
I needed 40K. And um, what I was going to sell, one is um, priced at, say, 35K. And then the other, like some furniture, like um, around, um, say, 25K. Yeah. Okay. And then the, I was actually still using them. For example, the tables. In fact, um, days after, I, I saw greater need of the tables. So if I had actually let them go, so to speak, I might have regretted it somehow. So I wouldn't know. I just want to seek clarification. Is it really a worthwhile decision to make in business to sell? Okay, towards the last uh, conversation, you are now audible again. But I got what you said. You said you wanted to sell some things, but yes. you couldn't sell them before the opportunity elapsed. Yes. But if you still want to do it, I know very much, I know very well about Espania. If you still want to do it, this thing is about knowledge. Number one, the price is now 62500 Yes, that's true. So you still have opportunity to sell what you want, do what you have to get what you want. So what can you sell to raise 62500 That should be your thinking now. Forget the opportunity that you have missed of 40000 naira. Now you have a challenge of raising 62500 naira. What do you have that you can sell to achieve that? Do you get it now? So that's the question for you. You can tell us. All right. So, um, sorry, because of time, I think yeah. that um, there, are, there are situations that are personalized, you know. Sometimes yeah. when we talk general like this, some people might need some, uh, ju just like you ask him to shed more light on their situation. The first question that you answered, the person was not specific enough, you know. Sometimes people just need to uh, probably out of a general session like this, get one-on-one. -on -one. So Mr. Dyer is displaying his phone number on the screen now, right? Uh, most of you, I believe you have my contact as well. So, but you see, the truth of the matter is that um, before you, especially if you are a starter, before you make business decisions, always consult with people that know better than you. It's going to save you a lot of trouble and it's going to save you a lot of losses. I'm talking from personal experience. So uh, because of our time, we will not really be able to wait for, uh, especially since your network is not so good. So copy the, uh, Mr. Dyer's number. You can reach him after the, after the session. I encourage everyone to also do that. All right, so thank you. If you, have any, if you have any question, you can ask uh, afterwards. You can also contact me if you have any question. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Dio for your benevolence. Like I said earlier when we started that, some of the things that uh, he's telling you now, I know some people are not taking it serious. You know, I know because I've been relating with people on this platform for some time. But I can tell you that if you are someone that is really, really serious about business, you see some people don't really want to take business as um, what they want to do. Some people have other alternatives. They are just doing business on the side. But you see, if you really, really have a vision and you believe in your business idea and you believe that business idea, if you, if you execute it, it is going to transform your life, then you want to give your best to it, all right? So I would encourage you, this uh, executive business transformation is monthly. Try as much as possible to attend. You know, it's not only uh, executive business transformation course. Anywhere they are talking about something that will give you knowledge as far as business is concerned. Especially, even if you have to pay, please do it, right? One of the reasons why very soon uh, executive business transformation course won't be free, right? But at this stage, we need to do this to do to test some things, right? So if you are wise, you take advantage of it now that it is free. I see a lot of people, I even offered to do one-on-one -on -one consult consultation for some people. I found out that um, if, you, if you had paid 150K 
for 30 minutes of consultation. You know, I, I'm sure most people have issues. So what I'm trying to say in essence is that Mr. Dayo says something to encourage you. Go and register your business. You see, when you when you are reluctant to do some of these things, it means what it means is that you really don't believe in that thing you call a business idea. That means you really don't believe it will succeed, right? You don't want to open a uh, um, business account because banks, you know, you know how many business accounts I have, I have opened. And for each of those accounts, banks will collect money. They will charge you, I don't know what they call it, legal fee or something, 10,000 naira. They ask you to deposit 10,000 naira. And by the time they are done with the account, maybe they will just leave about 500 naira inside for you or 1,000. So some people feel that is waste of money. So they are, they are shrinking back. You see, when you are not willing to take steps on some of the things that you have been taught, what it means is that you really don't, really don't believe that that business can succeed. So if you believe your business can succeed and you really believe that you, you want to, you really believe that you have the capacity and the potential to succeed in business, please go and register your business. Go and open your corporate bank account. Mr. Dio said he has a gift for you once you open. That's just to encourage you. Whether he gives you the gift or not, it is for your own good. Go and do it, right? So uh, I believe that um, you've gotten uh, some value in today's uh, lecture. Before we wrap up, I will also uh, make a comment that Mr. Dio talked about a book. And then he said that book is 6,000 Naira. Um, you see, I know some many, of, I know many people won't think about buying that book. And this is the one reason why many people remain on the same spot for a long time. Okay. Um, if you can get that book, it's going to help you a lot. And in, the, in our first, uh, we started EBTC in, um, in February. And for those of you that uh, participated in that first class, I really, really took my time to explain some things, which if you go over it again, I, I talked about building blocks for a successful business. We talked about a number of things, but I want to pick one of the points we discussed, networking, right? When you come to forums like this, you don't, it's not just to come and listen to what is being said alone, like Mr. Dio said. You interact. For example, my relationship with Mr. Dio eh, has yielded a lot of profit for me as a person. And for those of you that are listening now, if not that I have a relationship with him and I brought him to come and speak with you, even if you hear his name somewhere and you desire to contact him on your own, it will have cost you a lot of money, all right? So that is the power of networking. But now, because you register for executive business transformation course, I have a relationship with someone that I even though on a good day, he should have charged a lot of money for this presentation. He agreed to come and speak to you for free. And currently, I am building relationship with people from different parts of the world right? From China, from, from USA, from, and I am planning to bring some of these people who are highly successful in their fields. Come and also teach you one or two things. But you see, the next month, will you attend? That's the problem. Will you attend? I can see some people now that, yes, I understand the fact that people have different engagement, but you see, for those of you who know that, okay, business is what you really want to do for you know for for life then you should zero in your your options don't be here and there if it is business then read books about business attend seminars learn from people and make sure you are the best in uh in the business you want to do if you are not ready to do that quit business and go and get a job go and look for a job there was a time in my life when almost everybody around me are pushing me, putting pressure on me to get a job and things like that. And of course, you know, I was, I was uh, conceding to the pressure and I applied, you know, but you see the truth of the matter is 
all the job, even all the jobs I was, uh, they were, I was getting, and I look at how much without, without an official job in quote, I look at how much I was making in a month. None of them was ready to pay me up to that. So at the point in my life, I have to draw the line. And I told myself, it is this business that will make me. Yes, I may not be there yet, but I know it is going to take me there if I give focus and attention. From that point on, looking for a job is, is automatically cut out of my options. And I started building my business gradually. Do you understand? So I, I, want you to, I want to challenge you that you should take educating yourself along the line of whatever you have chosen to do in your life, take it very seriously. And um, I believe that if you can apply all these things, you won't regret it in Jesus' name. Oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's a good way to pray, but I've forgotten that we are not in church. Okay, so, uh, you know, one day I was, I was uh, delivering a lecture somewhere. I, I, I forgotten that I was not in church. I didn't know when I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> and the people were looking at me somehow. So the encouragement I want to give you is be serious. That's just the bottom line. Mr. Dyer made a powerful statement or two powerful statements. I want to recap. I want to repeat for those of you that probably joined late and for those of you who were there, but you probably didn't hear it the way I had it. He said that the more knowledgeable you are about what you do, the less money you will need to start. That point alone, if we want to start expanding it, we can be here for two hours, but we won't finish, you won't finish learning everything you need to learn in one class like this. That's why you need to keep attending. Mr. Dayo, as a mentor, who has also become my own mentor now, he, he does a month uh, coaching. I didn't tell you, Mr. Dayo, I started attending Mr. Dr. Abib Olamitoyes every month. I go to Ibadan, oh, I attend. That's awesome. <laughs> Do you understand? So if you have opportunity to be, to be listening to some people who are adding to your knowledge of what you already know, it's an opportunity. Don't say because it is free and you are commonizing it. Okay. So I want you to plan to attend the next uh, class. Join the WhatsApp group. Anytime we post something, create that time, right? And most of the time when we do uh, stuff like this, we give assignments. I don't need to give you any assignment today, Mr. Dyer has already given you an assignment. Go and register your business. That's the assignment. Go and open your business bank account. That's the assignment for today, right? And if you have any challenges along the way, talk to us. We are willing to help you. That's why we are here, okay? The next statement he made that I want you to pay attention to is that if your why is strong enough, there is no amount of money you need that you cannot raise. Okay, I didn't tell you, I don't need to tell you, I got a grant for a, a business, an internal, it's a big business, and I'm already putting structures in place. Uh, I'm already making contact with people in China. Maybe very soon, I'll be telling you about it if, uh, if, there, is a, if there is time for that. I, I got a grant for the business. Just like Mr. Dyer said, it was not the first time we applied for grant too, that we got it too. But I can tell you, getting a grant you see let me tell you even if you are looking for grant if you don't pay attention to your ideas and document things like he told you about business plan and all those things give deep thoughts to what you want to do how you want to achieve it and just think through consult with people get your ideas solidified some of you have good ideas but you have not really give a depth of thoughts to it that if you stand in front one day i was speaking with someone the person say, okay, this is the business I want to do. I, this is the money I need. And I asked the person, the person said, I have not started because I need money. I asked the person, how much do you need? And then the person is stammering. You are not going to get anywhere serious like that. If you get in front of somebody today that have the capacity to give you that money and he really, really has the money and he wants to give you and he asks you, how much do you need? And you can't answer the question. You've blown the opportunity. Right? So you need money. Many people are carrying this mindset in, my, in their business. I need money. I'm waiting for money to start. But he doesn't even know how much he needs. So, and when, and when you are, you know, carrying life on like that, a lot of opportunity will pass you by. 
you understand i i posted some things on my status currently uh the jack ma foundation's um uh grant i think application has opened because i got their mail uh recently that um, that is the african business heroes uh whatever the application is ongoing now you understand go and apply look for opportunities apply don't don't um just sit down in your room expecting that one day miracle will just happen that will bring money to meet you in the house go and open email check your email go online and look for opportunities attend programs where you are going to listen to opportunities there are opportunities you will never come across if you don't read books and if you don't go to seminars like this all right so i'm talking with passion because this is what I am passionate about. I started this thing because I have passion for it. So I am encouraging you, make it a regular thing, attend. You understand? And um, you've, you've known Mr. Dyer today. He has become part of your network, if you are serious. That's this phone number that is displaying on, your, on the screen. I have attended. The first time I brought a white man to come and speak on my program, it was just, he just dropped his contacts on the Zoom listing and I contacted him. We started talking and then he agreed to come and speak for me. You understand? So build networks and all of that. You, you can't hear it any better than that. So please, if you have any, uh, anything, any help along the line, please just drop, uh, contact us and we'll be willing to help you. So this is the bit we carry the capacity to deliver for today and it is not cheap, right? Even if I did not spend anything, the time to sit down here is part of my expenses for this class. The data I use is part of my expenses for this class. You understand? So please justify that investment by doing something with what you have had, right? And I believe that um, you will have uh, better stories, better testimonies to share in the next couple of uh, year. Mr. Daya, once again, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That have joined, we appreciate you. Everyone that have joined, we also appreciate you. Please, I want to encourage you. Uh, for those of you who have participated and you've gotten some value, we still hope to bring more for you. You know, but please, we want to encourage you. Invite people. Some of you, you are getting free lectures like this, and they still tell you to share the link. It, your hand is too heavy to share. It's not good. Let other people come and benefit from this thing. So see you next month. First Friday of every month is the Executive Business Transformation course. And uh, next month, we are going to be meeting again. Let me also use this opportunity to invite you for uh, a program that is going to be coming up tomorrow. That is um, breaking your dependence on salary. And our topic for tomorrow, Mr. Dio also, uh, <laughs> incidentally, is going to be speaking at the event. The topic we are going to be dealing with is the purpose of salary. And when I say salary, it is not just salary in terms of if you are a salary earner. If you are not a salary earner too, and let's say you do business, a little business, and you make money, the, we must know the purpose of your income. Because when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. One major reason I personally found out that people are poor is because people don't understand the purpose of their income and so they abuse it so join us tomorrow 10 a.m every first saturday of the month is the uh the breaking your dependence on salary coaching class so invite other people join us after now i'm going to be posting uh posting the invite link on the on our ebtc group chat so if you want to join you can also join join and invite other people so thank you very much uh we would be calling it uh, a date here because of our time. Uh, Mr. Dio, I wouldn't know if you have maybe one or two comments to make. Okay. We... Thank you, everybody. Uh, we believe so much that you've uh, gained some values here today. So uh, we look forward to your success story. And uh, like I'll be asking of you for Mr. Matthew as we. Uh, as you progress in your executive business transformation efforts. Thank you very much. So we are going to end the meeting now. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome.